In 1218, the Mongols ruled the conquered territories in China with an iron fist. The Chinese had paid a high price for underestimating the steppe barbarians. Now, they were forced to collaborate and obey their new sovereigns. The Mongols didn't give much value to coins or precious metals. They soon realized that it would be a waste to accumulate such things. With the help of Chinese experts, the Mongols learned that trade was the best way to make a kingdom prosper. Genghis Khan decided to make use of a large number of plundered coins and started sending emissaries to distant kingdoms like Korea, India, and Persia. The intention was to establish trade routes with other kingdoms while attacking the Song dynasty constantly. But one serious diplomatic issue changed the course of history forever. Persia was run by a Muslim empire called Khawarizm. The Mongolian emissaries who were sent to seek trade deals with the Khorizam were accused of being spies and executed. Such an offense could not go without an answer. The Mongols set out to confront the brave Muslim armies. In command of 200,000 warriors, Genghis Khan advanced against large Persian cities. The Khorizam had great armies with brave and well-trained knights. But even that wasn't enough to defeat the Mongols, who were fighting like angry wolves. The cities of Samarkand and Bukhara were besieged and shattered by the Mongols. The destruction was so massive that not even the animals were spared. Millions of human lives perished during the Mongol invasions in Persia. In 1220, the Khwarazm Empire was extinct, and the world knew it would never underestimate the Mongols again. The Mongols had already learned about the benefits of adding different types of soldiers to their ranks, and because of this, Many Muslim warriors were allowed to join the Mongolian army. The gigantic Mongolian army had people of different ethnicities and cultures. Mongols, Chinese, and Arabs lived side by side in the camps. This had many benefits for the development of new ties between these peoples. The Mongols were incredibly tolerant of the religious and spiritual beliefs of other peoples, allowing cults and rituals of all kinds in their camps and cities. The religion of the Mongols is known as Tengriism. It's based on the belief of a supreme deity called Tengri, which would be heaven itself above all things on earth. Tengriism incorporates shamanic elements and ancestor worship. However, over time, it has also come to include elements of Tibetan Buddhism. With the capture of the Persian territories, the Mongols had under their rule much of the famous Silk Road. The Silk Road connected the commerce of several countries, being used by caravans from more distant and exotic lands. It is where the most valuable goods of the time passed through. The Mongols did not forgive thieves. They kept relentlessly going after those who dared to commit crimes in their territories. Because of this, the Silk Road became safe for travelers and merchants, which popularized the term Pax Mongolica, Mongol Peace. To control such a source of wealth was decisive for the emerging Mongol Empire. With this pretext, the Mongols set out for Europe, where they began to conquer lands in Russia and Ukraine. Nothing seemed capable of stopping the advance of the Mongol armies, commanded by generals with authority to decide when to attack or retreat. The Mongols divided their forces and attacked multiple targets at the same time, preventing the enemies to be reinforced. But, in 1227, the great leader Genghis Khan passed away abruptly. His death brought a wave of uncertainty among the Mongols. Many leaders and generals believed themselves worthy of taking the title of Khan of the Khans. The successor of Genghis Khan was his third son Ogade, responsible for continuing the expansion of the Mongol Empire. The other sons and grandsons of Genghis Khan were given command of territories that would become known as Khanates. As was expected of a son of Genghis Khan, Ogade proved to be a strong leader. Under his command, the Mongols completed the conquest of northern China and completely dominated Korea. Ogade managed to enter the territory of the powerful Song dynasty. That started a war that would last 40 years for the control of southern China. Following the model of divide and conquer, the Mongols continued to advance towards Europe. The Mongols had the leadership of one of the greatest generals and military strategists in history, Subutai. He had served Genghis Khan and now Sir Ogade Khan. Subutai was a man of simple origins, but thanks to his achievements on the battlefield, he managed to rise to the rank of great general of the Mongolian nation. 
and is said to be even a personal friend of Genghis Khan. Subutai lived up to his reputation. Together with other generals of the Mongolian army, he led an invasion against Russia. That in itself would be an act of courage given the vastness of Russian territory and its history of having brutal warriors. But Subutai was not a common general, and neither were his tactics. Subutai invaded Russia in the middle of winter, progressing with his troops in temperatures below zero. The achievement was only possible thanks to the outstanding resilience of the Mongol warriors. The Russians fought bravely, but were unable to stop the Mongolian war machine. In 1240, the great city of Kiev was taken and plundered. Poland, Hungary, and Romania were the next kingdoms to fall. Not even the European knights, veterans of the Crusades, could answer the Mongol archers. The other European countries were already preparing for the inevitable invasion, desperately trying to send emissaries to negotiate with the Mongol leaders. But the Mongol Empire suffered another unexpected blow. In 1241, Ogaday Khan passed away due to alcoholism. As the Mongolian customs dictated, all the leaders of the nation had to gather to elect a new sovereign. This spared the rest of Europe from being annexed by the Mongol Empire. The election was presided over in the capital of the Mongol Empire, the city of Karakorum, which had been built in Mongolia. The death of Ogaday revealed the ambition of many nobles in Mongolian society. In the following years, there was an intense succession of leaders who fought for the title of Great Khan. That fueled armed conflicts among the Mongols. The Great Mongol Empire was already showing its first signs of instability. Years went by, and disagreements among the noble Mongols continued to weaken the empire. Then, one of Genghis Khan's grandchildren, the famous Kublai, defeated his younger brother's troops and claimed the title of the supreme leader of the Mongolian nation. The empire was divided into four major khanates. In 1271, the Yuan dynasty was founded by Kublai Khan and commanded the territories of China and Korea. Chagatai, the second son of Genghis Khan, founded his empire in northern Afghanistan, which was called Chagatai Khanate. The Golden Horde Khanate controlled much of Russia and Hungary and was founded by Batu Khan. The Il Khanate was centered in Persia and was commanded by Hulagu Khan. Kublai Khan conquered the last Chinese territories that resisted Mongolian domination. He became the first foreign emperor to rule all of China. As a child, Kublai was educated under the customs of the Chinese court. Soon, he became an educated man and enjoyed the luxury of civilized life, which was seen as a weakness by many traditionalist Mongol leaders. Kublai Khan's government was plagued by riots and political conspiracies. His territorial administration was not having good results, and uprisings frequently broke out at different points in the empire. In an attempt to fortify his position as leader of a warrior nation, Kublai wanted to conquer new territories, turning his attention to Japan. Compared to the Mongol Empire, Japan was a small and poor country. It looked like an easy target to conquer. Using Chinese boats, the Mongols assembled a large fleet and set sail for the Japanese coast. But they did not expect a sudden weather change. A strong typhoon hit the Japanese sea and the Mongolian squadron was shattered. Their boats capsized or crashed into each other, causing the death of thousands of warriors in the turbulent waters. The Japanese baptized those strong winds of Kamikaze, the divine wind. They considered that only divine intervention could protect Japan from being slayed by the Mongols. In 1281, the Mongols crossed the sea yet again to attack Japan. This time, however, the Japanese navy was prepared and managed to block their progress. The few Mongol ships that arrived on Japanese beaches did not have enough warriors to defeat the samurai. Inspired by the need to defend their land, they fought with brutal determination. Kublai's reign suffered a major hit after the disastrous attacks against Japan. Slowly, the Mongol Empire began to crumble. The lack of an organized leadership opened space for revolts and the emergence of new kingdoms, which started to expel the Mongols from their old lands. The Mongol Empire officially lasted until 1368, when it finally dissolved. Most Mongols returned to their homeland as nomads. Even nowadays, there are still many people who lead a simple life in the Mongolian steppes. 
but their stories will always keep alive the pride of their ancestors, preserving the legacy of having one day covered the sun with their arrows and made the earth tremble under the hooves of their horses.